Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming. So in this video, we are going to open up another three heavy Neo Genesis First Edition packs. Michael was definitely interested in all the packs that I had left. I don't think he actually realized that I had three on eBay and three on my website, um, and they were separate quantities. Uh, so that was a little miscommunication between us, but when he watched the video, he was like, yeah, man, I'll take them. So we're going to open those up. Uh, before we open these packs up, I'm actually going to show you guys some purchases and a small PSA return for another customer. Um, I went to I went to the post office between the last video and between this video while I was uploading. So we've got some pretty cool stuff to show. First, I'm going to show you one of these. I bought an original uh, photograph. Uh, I guess some kind of, I'm not even sure how this stuff is uh, uh, used. You guys can read all that there if you want to. There's the Pikachu project. You know, advertising, promotion, yada, 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 whatever. But it's really cool. I mean, it was pretty cheap, and I thought this would be something neat to have. It's definitely on, like, some glossy type of paper, and it's in really good condition. So I, I thought that was neat to pick up, especially for a cheap price. Um, next up, I have a purchase right here. You guys can probably see some of that. So I'm going to open up into it. This is from Richard Tarr again. So you guys... Saw in the other video where I bought off one of bought one of his PSA 10 Charizards. He sold me this Ho-Oh as well, and he did it for a pretty good price. I think I, I offered pretty close to what he had it for because I thought it was a fair price. I think it was maybe 250 dollars or so. But I'm gonna add that one to my personal collection, and it looks like and here's his information again. You guys can go check him out. There's his email. There's his eBay shop, and last time he threw in some free stuff, and he's throwing in free stuff again. And I already can see that there's a winner best of game card in here, so that's really sweet. So let's check out what he sent. So he sent a Rocket Sneezles. He actually sent two winner stamped Rocket Sneezles, and you know, usually these are in really good shape. Check that out. Now, I bet those could easily be PSA graded. And he also sent a free booster pack. So thank you very much, Richard. We're going to open this up right now and see what we get. Maybe we'll pull something cool out of it. There's a free code for somebody. Let's see, we got Vulpix. Man, I remember this set so well. I bought so much of Primal Clash. It was a breakout set for Pokemon because they changed the pull rates from like four Ultra Rares in a box to six. And you could get Mega Full Arts, which was really cool. And you couldn't do that before this. So we have the Rare Candy. This is a very, very powerful um, item card. It's It was just regular trainers back in the day. It was a Pokemon breeder. That's pretty much what it is. It basically lets you skip a stage. So you can go from Charmander to Charizard. So a lot of people used it. And then there we have Rhyperior. Got Vibrava and a few other cards. There's 160 cards in this set. And uh, just about all of them you could use in one way or another in some type of deck. All right. Next, we have a base set booster box, and this one's pretty clean. It's not like super minty. It's got like scuffs on it, so I'm probably going to open this booster box up because it's not some special variant, and I do already have this one um, in mint condition, and you guys have been begging for more heavy base set booster packs, but I had to pay a lot more for this one. Uh, the previous one I bought before this, maybe three weeks ago I paid four thousand for and this one I actually bought for fifty one hundred dollars plus I can't it was fifty one something or another so the, the price is probably gonna go up but I I'm gonna I might bust open this box here at the very end of the video I tell you what if we don't pull Typhlosion 17 or Lugia uh, I'll open this box up and we'll just check to make sure it doesn't have black triangles inside so I'm gonna set that off to the side and the last thing I'll show you guys is a PSA return for a customer customer of mine I've been working with a lot on Patreon, for those of you who don't uh, don't subscribe to me on there, there are people who uh, come to me for questions about different types of investing and middlemanning and all kinds of stuff like that. And I do a lot of that through Patreon. It's a lot of questioning. Um, but this is Ike. This is his PSA return. He bought a Shadowless base set booster box and he opened it up. And here are ten. Of the, well, actually, there's only eight of his hollows in this one that come from that box. There's another two that he bought off of Troll and Toad, and then the rest of them were sent in another submission. So these are all pack fresh. You got eight of the hollows right here, and these were submitted on the express level. I was really happy to see the order come back so quickly from PSA uh, because of the COVID stuff. It got sent in, and it pretty much got hung up you know, right as soon as it got registered. So I wasn't expecting it back this early, but it came back pretty quick. So first, we're going to look up. We're going to have this Zapdos, and it's an eight- Point five. I'm going to push off in these cards a little bit more so you can't see the grade. 
and spoil it. So we've got this Zapdos here, and um, like I said, these are pack fresh. I'm looking at it, and I, I thought, you know, let's, maybe we should look at it a little bit more in depth and see why I got the, it didn't get a 9 or a 10. And I think you can see right here, you see these print lines, you see three or four of them right there. Also, the centering, it's shifted up. You can't tell as much with the Zapdos because the it's all yellow. Maybe you can see a little bit better on the back side. It's shifted just a little bit, but not too much. That's on the outside of the case, but the corners look really good. I think this is a very strong 8.5. has very minimal whitening on here, so this one could have easily swung to a 9, in my opinion. Next up, we have another Charizard, or we have a Charizard. There's more than one in this video, just so you know. We have, he has this one got a near mint mint eight and I'm looking at it and I tell you it's a pretty strong eight. You've got some really light print lines right here to the left. I got to put this light over it so you guys can kind of see it. And then the centering, I think the centering is what killed it a little bit too, maybe for a point. And then the back side again, the edges are really strong. These are very 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 strong grades. I think. I mean that one could have again easily been a nine. I think the centering is what you know deducted at least one of those points. Next up we have a near mint seven Charizard. I don't think this one was one that he pulled from the packs. I believe he had ordered this one off of Troll and Toad. You can see right there it's got a strong print line through the bottom and a few other scratches in the hollow. Centering is really good. The color's kind of faded. It's not as strong of color. The back side does have a few white nicks across the bottom. So I can see why this one got a seven, but again, this is a really strong seven. Next up we have a Charizard Shadowless Mint 9. So I'm going more I'm going I'm going into these all you know very good in depth because you know he paid for a lot you know to have these submitted on the level that he did and uh, I want, want him to be able to see exactly where it got deducted. I think that little white dot there may have uh, knocked this one down from the 10 because I tell you it's really strong in the hollow. The centering I mean it's pretty strong too. I mean it's he, I believe he pulled this one and this one from that shadowless box. So he pulled two Charizards. I wish I had been able to record it for him. That would have been sweet. But I bet he had a ball opening up these um, PSA or these packs. Because he sold me the light booster packs as well. And then we have a fourth Charizard. And again, I think this one was from Troll and Toad. It got a 7. And I'm going to show you exactly why this one got the 7. It has the same printing defect that my first edition Charizard had. And I see this quite often on Shadowless Charizards. It's got like almost like an indention that goes right across it. And I remember when I pulled my first edition Charizard directly from the box, sent it straight to PSA, it also got the 7. And there's no way I was probably going to get any higher than that. Next up, we have Blastoise pulled the 8. And uh, this one, kind of same story. I think the centering was off just a little bit. You can see how big it is on the bottom compared to the top. And then if you look right here in the hollow, you can see those print lines. They're very hard to see unless you shine the light you know, at the right angle on it. Back side, the corners actually look pretty good. Got one white dot right there. So I think between those three things, that's why this one got an eight. But again, this is a really strong eight. For those of you who um, have shadowless cards and you've bought them off eBay, I mean, you can, usually eights, <laughs> they, they have a lot more than that. Next up, Clefairy, another eight. And again, I think it's the centering and this one, uh, the scratches in the hollow or the hollow print lines are a lot more prevalent. You can see it all the way through the bottom. So I think that's why this one got the eight. Next up, we have Alakazam, another eight. Um, you can't really see the print lines as strong on this one unless you shine in the right light, but you can see it definitely right there between his legs and they go right across the bottom. Centering, again, just a little bit off. Those are, I mean, this is my opinion for why they gave it an eight instead of a nine or a 10, of course. Next up, we have the Mewtwo, another eight. And this one looks to have similar issues. Just got the print lines straight across the bottom. You can see them there. And then, you know, the centering from top to bottom is off just a little bit. Then we have one more card to go, and it's the Chansey. This is the only one that I did not get at least an eight. And we all know Chansey is so hard to grade. You know, you've got the centering, you know, but this is a clear background type Pokemon. So that makes it so easy to pick up any of the little scratches that are in the background and I think that's what happened. You can kind of see the same print lines they went all the way up and down. Let's look at the back side. Back side has a little white dot right there and a little white dot there. So this is one of the strongest sevens you know that I've seen. It does have those print lines but the surface of it is you know super clean. This would be a card wet that you could maybe even cross over to B, uh, BGS because they do the four point grading scale. So, you know, the edges on this are probably, you know, like a nine, 
you've got centering probably close to an eight or a nine and then you've got you know the hot the surface you know other than this right here i mean the rest of the surface is going to be good and then you've got the edges which are probably close to a 10 because i didn't see any damage with that so it would probably grade a little bit higher there but overall that's probably why it got a seven at psa all right so let me uh put these down i don't want them falling down in the background that is ike's psa return this is, i think this is the first one that i've gotten back for him that he submitted through me so this should be his first experience with that maybe you can put a few comments down there in the description buddy and uh tell me what you think about your submission now michael we are getting to your first edition neo genesis pack openings i'm sure you've been ready for that usually i like to uh, save the best artwork for last but i think it works better when i just Put, do it exactly in the order that I uh, set it in the background in. And so this Lugia we're going to do first. Now, as far as we know, no T17, no, no Typhlosion, and no Lugia have been pulled as of yet. There was a few packs that got sent out that some people didn't open. But all the ones that I've opened up here on YouTube have been uh, other Pokemon. Got to make sure we keep these in good condition. All right. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a double turn on these last two. We'll see what happens with this first one. So we've got Lightning Energy, Togepi, Quagsire, Miracle Berry. I think Gold Berry is probably one of the most expensive um, common or uncommon cards you can get. Of course, Pikachu is a good one. I don't think we saw any Pikachus in his first three packs. All right, so for pack one, we have... Oh, we got a Typhlosion. Okay, we didn't get the T17, but we did get this one. And the price on this guy has went up quite a bit. Uh, last, the last time that I did this where we had pulled the two Typhlosions, or Typhlosion and two Slow, King, Slow Kings, and the other Typhlosion, where the guy had opened up four heavy packs, I believe he was around 300 bucks for PSA 10, but I think he's went up about five times that price now. And I tell you, that's a good-looking hollow. If there's print lines, I don't see them. Maybe you guys can see it. Let me know in the comments. Centering is the only thing that I would think that may uh, detract from the tin. Looking at the front side. Let's look at the back side. Wow. Good corners. Good edges. Again, the centering is just off by a little bit. But I would say that would be the only thing that would hold this back from getting a tin. Unless you guys see something. Maybe you can see something that, um, that I don't. Alright, so I think what we're going to do with these two packs... We're going to uh, do a double flip, and in fact, so I don't see that first card and accidentally reveal you know, the second card, I'm going to turn it around backwards and pull off that first energy. So there's the hollow. I'm going to sleeve him up. Should have another sleeve, yeah. Second there, I thought I lost my sleeve. And then we'll go through the bulk on these two packs. This one is centered well, so I would say that's almost a different print run. If you look at it, actually it has like some the whitening on the side. I think we had saw that with another card that we had opened up. So hopefully this, you know what, it's gonna be a card one way or the other. So let's just say this is gonna be a double Lugia flip. I'm thinking that this one has the potential to be a repeat of one of the other cards because we saw that with the metal energy. If you guys remember, the metal energy that we pulled last time was well centered, and the other one that we did not was not well centered. So I'm thinking those may have been on two different sheets. So who knows? Maybe we'll have two Lugias. That'd be sweet, wouldn't it? All right, so we've got water energy, Lydian, Zatu. Grand Bull, Cyndaquil, Oddish, Areep, Giraffe Rig, Moo Moo Milk, and Chikorita. And then for the bulk from the third pack, Lightning Energy, Noctowl, that's a good one. Super Scoop Up, Seedra, Moo Moo Milk, got Giraffe Rig, another Chikorita, Mantine, Slowpoke. Oh, we got the Pikachu. And, wow, is it, almost, it almost looks like a gray stamp. You know, I thought it was a little bit grayed out last time with that second metal energy, so that should confirm again for me that this one's probably from that same sheet because it looks like they use a little bit less ink. And looking at that little bit of edge around the side, I'm wondering if they tried to cut corners on edging as well. All right, so I'm going to say worst case scenario, we get two Kingdras. Best case scenario, we get two Lugia. Let's see what we can get. 
Oh, we got the Typhlosion. Man. Oh, it's just killer that, that it's got that edge wear on that side. Dang, he actually pulled it though. Pack fresh. Let's look at the hollow. Man, it's really, it's really light. It's not as strong as many of them. But dang, it is there. Wow, so we've pulled another T17 on the channel. And um, I would say, looking at how light those print lines are, this one would have a decent shot at a 9 if the backside hadn't had that edge wear thing going on or whatever it is. It's like it's extra card attached to the side. Those of you who are familiar with base set, it, they did this a lot. Because you can see, I mean, there's nothing on the corners. You know, those look great. This is one of those uh, things that SM Pratt was talking about how a lot of times when you pull this card, it, it almost always it has the print lines. You know, it's tough to pull, it's a tough set, really popular card. But then you've got this God tier thing going on where you still have to look for the edgeware on the back. Oh, man. All right, so let's don't discount the Togetic back here. Got both Typhlosions, that's really sweet. Um, this one looks like it does have a print line going through its head, but that's about it. You know, you've got the centering, you know, the same kind of centering that Typhlosion had, so this one's probably a strong nine. I would say this one is probably, this one's a nine, you know, might have a 10 if they don't count off for the centering, and then Typhlosion, this is just the card we wanted to pull. You know, I still haven't pulled a Lugia from these packs. But congrats, Michael. I think you did really good with the pulls that you have. And uh, for those of you who haven't opened up your packs yet, you know, Lugia is still alive. Hopefully, you can uh, pull you one from them. I think there's a few packs out there from the box that haven't been opened. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your favorite pull is, and what do you think that Typhlosion will grade.